Yo, 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 what up everybody, welcome back to another episode of Brothers in Arms, a new way for men to talk. I am your host, comedian Edgar Rivera, and I am joined today by my brothers, Dr. Dan Ratner and comedian Eric Nieves. What's happening, brothers? Great to see you. Great to see you, Dr. Dan. You look, you always look so exciting. Like I'm always wondering how Dr. Dan is gonna react. And you always react faster than Eric. But good to see you. Eric is still like You know what? What's That's up? not a, it's not a surprise though. Th think about it this way. I mean, I'm a therapist, so you would think that maybe I would sit back and be quiet, but the thing is, therapists are meant to like welcome people. So I'm not gonna let you say, How you guys doing? and have it hang out there. So I'm always gonna jump in. If Eric shows the slightest hesitation, I'm there. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, I want you to know, Dr. Dan, that I never, you're my first therapist, you know, so <laughs> I don't know how to act when it comes to this. So, yes, thank you. Thank you so much. It is my pleasure to orient you to therapy. <laughs> Look at Eric. <laughs> well, I mean, I, 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 I think you both forgot that we actually agreed at a meeting that when I get to the greeting that we would let Dan go first so I would stop stepping on his tongue <laughs> and stepping over him whenever I spoke. Uh, but that's fine. We could do the, it's the whole, he's a therapist thing. That's why I was. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally forgot about the Revision content of history. that meeting. I, I did actually, but you know, now that you say it, I do remember it. That's right. We agree yeah. because uh, we, we, we kept, uh, we, we kept crossing swords as it were, like we were two guys going for one right, year. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So we were like, listen, you know, <laughs> I don't like that term. We need to stop. Oh. We need to stop. I don't meeting know how like I feel this. about the crossing swords turn. <laughs> like I could just you picture know? like, no, no well, it's, I'm, I'm, it's an analogy. I'm just, I'm just giving the audience a, a visual. Don't uh, cross the streams. I, don't cross the streams. <laughs> you know, it can, it'll, it'll cause a reverse of light. Um, nice, uh, yeah. But yeah, I'm doing good. Edgar, how you doing, man? Ah, man, I'm, I'm, you know, good, man. Every, every, you know, looking forward to every week, as you know, now that we're back in a, in a flow of things, you know, so I feel great about that. It's, just, you know, every week is a different setup, a little different, little touchy, touchy, you know, minor thing that we got to work on. But we're here, brother, we're here. That's what counts. You, Dr. Chip. Dan? Oh, I've had, I've had quite a couple of weeks. You know, we, we, uh, we had a break. And mm -hmm. that it involved me traveling. And, of course, like when you travel in these days and ages, uh, the, the chance of coming back with COVID is very high. <laughs> and that's what happened, you know. <laughs> so I it's been I, I feel so much better now than I did. And I still feel like it's really lingering. It's, we're on day 12. I've tested negative now. And uh, but I still feel like mm, I'm not I'm like 80 percent. When was that? When was the last time you got tested? Oh, about. Um, maybe 75 minutes ago <laughs> are you still testing negative yeah oh i meant, uh, to, bring it up. I meant to bring it up no no, no I, I tested negative today oh. for the first time i meant nice. to bring it up to show everybody but i don't have it <laughs> you should have well, done it on the air that would have been like like an on-air COVID test on yeah, air because <laughs> it, 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 was it was a home test you was it was a home test you took right it, it was a new way for men to test a new That's way right. for men to test. Well, I'm glad you're you're feeling better, man. It's crazy because uh, for all the listeners, if you l listen to all the season, <laughs> the both seasons, Doctor Dan has never gotten COVID. He's really protected himself against COVID for almost two years, and then boom, here he goes. And you told us something yesterday during the meeting that I found very interesting because. Everybody has a different thing with COVID now. Right? I feel like the COVID that's going around now is completely different from the one that I got two and a half years ago. And I can't believe I'm saying that I had COVID two and a half years ago. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's um, you, you told me you lost your scent and I thought that still wasn't happening. So I'm wondering if it was something the fact that it's the first time you got COVID, you know, it could be. I mean, I've heard people say that they have lost their, their sense of smell uh, throughout, even with Omicron. So uh, but it's a weird thing. You know, like, and it's so funny too because you 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 never think it's it's that way for you. You hear people have lost their sense of smell. I I just went to smell something and I was like, oh, this doesn't smell very much, <laughs> as if as if the smell had changed, <laughs> not not the fact that I clearly I have COVID and that. You were blaming the like, product. He was blaming the yeah. product. I can't smell this product. It must be expired. <laughs> exactly. It must be scentless. This product. This is, uh, I mean, it's a scentless one. Scentless deodorant. <laughs> Which, so that so that way you don't you don't smell good you don't smell bad you just don't smell like anything mm -hmm. you just <laughs> you can't you smell kind yourself of exist in a void of scent <laughs> speed stick COVID <laughs> speed stick COVID -19. well man I'm glad I'm glad that we could actually laugh about this you know actually you know it's it was scary at, at one point but I'm glad that you you're feeling better now I'm glad that you well it's it's still it's negative. still scary it, it, it I mean, is it's still scary it is. that it's still around I mean uh, I I think we've become very desensitized uh, well, well, 
you know the word. Uh, no, I don't. Thank you. Uh, we, I, I think we've kind of gotten so burnt out. We're like, ah, eh, because you know people well, are still dying. So it's not, not, well, not only that, but people e- are not dying. But even like for me, this last like ten days was really hard, and it was hard from the vantage point of like. You get in your own head about it. I mean, I'm a mind body expert. I know, th- I I know this. You'd think that I would be able to not do it, but I'm a human being. So like, your mind races, and and you're like, when am I gonna get better? I can't believe I still don't don't feel good. And then you, uh, it's not very linear either the recovery. So, I have a lot of empathy for the people who go through this. I did before anyway, but going through it myself now, I, I one of the things that I realize is how often we just kind of take it for granted that other people will be fine because Mm -hmm. mostly people are pulling through just fine. And so you think, oh, well, just because it's not so dangerous now, everything should be fine. But the fact is I've talked to people who have been through it and I've just been through it myself and it is a very trying time. Really, Mm -hmm. really challenging. Well, you say, I mean, I mean, when, when you said mind body, it it makes a lot of sense. You know what I'm saying? Because ever since I took your, your know, your mind body workshops. I realized that how we could make something worse. How the mind could actually take over. You could be perfectly fine and take a COVID test and immediately feel like all these crazy symptoms that you didn't have a minute ago if you test positive. You know what I'm saying? I did so get worse when I tested positive, like almost instantly. And that's I, and that's weird coming from you. You know, I like I, you I, think- I I I need to focus on the the mind and body connection. But I really need to talk to you, Doctor Dan. I really ne- never had a conversation about it. I misheard. I thought you said Bath and Body Works. <laughs> so I went to the mall and I picked up a salted soap, and I yep. thought that was gonna release my depression. And, and I, I, I know. But I, I smell good. I wanted to get aromatherapy, and I can't smell now. So it's uh, well, I listen. I I still have my coupon from Bath and Body Works. So. You know, no, it's all right. That's good. It's not a total loss. <laughs> you definitely got to get down with it, though, Derek. I mean, it. I mean, Doctor Dan has helped me. It, that has helped me a lot. I could see how before, even as much as this podcast has done for mm-hmm. me, because this podcast has done a lot for me. I mean, the fact that we get together, the fact that we, we, you know, you guys see me cry. I've shared some stuff that I've never shared with no one, and not just with you guys, but with the world. Uh, it's made me a better person, but your mind body experience has really helped me a lot. So, you know, it, 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 but it's instantly, instantly, you know, in a heartbeat. Like I've realized when I feel something, I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? And I know how we could make it worse. We could definitely, definitely make it worse. Well, I'm, I'm really glad it's, it's helped you so much, and I've certainly seen it. But it's interesting because we talk about on this show that, you know, this is a, like, about men talking to each other and about getting people in general just to talk to each other. Interestingly, if we're paying attention to our symptoms, that's like we're talking to ourselves. But if you're not paying attention to your symptoms and you don't know, you don't mm-hmm. know what you don't know what your body's saying to you. So yeah. it's a pr- it's pretty interesting. I mean, I find it totally fascinating, but it's what I do. But I think it's really an important part of the puzzle of getting people to talk to each other because they know it themselves much better if they're paying attention to that. You know, yeah. guys don't like to. Well, guys are good at pretending that stuff is not happening to avoid conversations, which is why, like, uh, we'll be the like we'll we won't have a physical until like our eye is hanging out, and then we, then we'll schedule our annual physical. You know, yeah. it's like a, mm-hmm. I'm just here for my physical, and here's my eye. Is this normal? <laughs> is this you know? Is this normal? Is this uh? I mean, it popped out yesterday. I mean, I can still see out of it, but just in a different angle. Yeah, so, actually, I yeah. have more more range with my. You, you, know, you know, crazy. You know, I could, I could, if I want to look around the corner, it's great. But you know, <laughs> it's, I can't really. You, see. you know, you know, what's crazy, Eric. Man, I've known you for a very long time, and through all the conversations that we always had, our friendship and everything else, I've never heard you complain about anything when it came to like. Like a pain, like like Eric. I never even heard of Eric even getting sick, dude. Did you even get COVID? Uh, no, 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 I have not. So, so um, you and Greg are the only ones in the team left over. It's two uh, and two. So, so so far, <laughs> knock on wood, um, uh, that, that has been the case. Uh, God only know, you know, which which doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. I have received every. I'm 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 due for my booster. Actually, I've gotten I think I actually got a, a, a email telling me I'm due for my booster. So I've, ha- I've had like I got the shot. I got the second shot. I'm now due for the for the other one. I, I'm sure that helps. I, um, I really I really would get it, Eric. I mean, I, I did not actually get the booster this time around. I had heard it wasn't that effective, wasn't that important. 
and this is interesting because I know we, we we wanted to talk about self criticism. Th- this is actually one of the one of the ways that I have been self critical lately. Is I'm mad at myself that I didn't get the booster because I could have prevented this potentially, or at least lessened how intense it was. Mm-hmm. And um, it, I mean, in retrospect, I understand what my decision was. Nice. I just figured, well, why why pour a bunch of extra you know stuff into my body if if it doesn't seem like it's that effective or needed? But I did actually get pretty critical of myself about that. Really? Uh, well, I now did. you got the best booster, I think. <laughs> you got the well, best I mean, booster you, now. But, <laughs> but that that that's the thing. I guess this thing is always evolving. I am planning on getting it. I was actually going to see uh, about getting it within the next couple of days when I go back to the office. But uh, uh, yeah, you, you I mean, mean the I, booster, I, not COVID. The booster. Uh, no, I, you know, I don't want. I, I. Is there a definite <laughs> place to go get COVID? Are there COVID cafes? Yeah, I mean, well, like no. just Florida. Florida. You know, <laughs> come to Orlando. No, no, come Miami. Get COVID. <laughs> the, um, come to Orlando. <laughs> Yo, Eric, what you gonna Gainesville. do this weekend? Well, I'm gonna look for COVID. <laughs> come on down to Gainesville. Get COVID. Made me marry a relative. God bless the South. You, you know what I find? You know what I find crazy that we are in season two, and we still freaking talking about fucking COVID. You know, it's crazy. I find it crazy. And, and Eric, you brought up a good point because we we don't as men we don't we don't check ourselves. We are so stubborn when it comes to stuff like that. You know, I'm saying like we, like we'll wait to the last minute to go get a physical. And I think we need to to change that. You know, I think that's a criticism that we all men have. You know, oh no, we good, we good. I got up this morning. You know, it hurt in the morning, but then I'm feeling better now. And we ignore a lot of our our pains in our bodies and stuff that we should be taking care of. You know, like my father's scare was my eye opener when I had to go to PR and take care of my dad and and like seeing all of that. I was like, okay, this is this is gonna be it. You know, like I gotta take care of myself from now on. And I've been, I've been going to the doctor every week, man. Every week I have a doctor's appointment. Every week, you have a weekly feel, checkup. Now I'm like, I feel like I'm like my grandparents. I'm like, I call people. Can you take me to the doctor? <laughs> you know, because it's crazy. But we have to take care of ourselves as men, you know. And it's great. And, it, and I just thought about it, Eric. I was like, I've never had a conversation with Eric. I'm always talking to Eric. Oh, I got to get the surgery. Oh, I'm, I got this pain. I got this. I got that. And, and, it, and it goes with part of the whole mind body because I feel like the more we talk about it, the more we entertain it, the more our brain, brain loves it, and the more the, the, we feel that pain. So I stop complaining when it comes to that. But it's weird. I never heard Eric complain about Do you ever get sick, dude? I, I get sick on, very, on occasion. You know, uh, but I'm just, I don't get sick very often, you know. I just um, think you don't tell no one. I just think it's just like a thing, like you could just, if you could just keep it to yourself, you keep it to yourself. Oh, uh, no, listen, forward. I have a big mouth. I, I tell you, I, I, I tell you, I think, the, um, the, I, I think if I, the biggest illness for me is uh, um, uh, when I don't want to go to work on Monday. That's like my most common illness. Mm-hmm. You know, that Monday when you're like, oh, fuck, I don't feel Monday Like, like that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that, that's my usual sickness. But that, but that's that that's not something that you can you know that's nothing compared to what you've been uh, going that, through the that, last couple of weeks and months and years with your surgeries and stuff. Oh um, my god! But I will yeah. I will say I will say this you know like um, I think uh, you know the topic today by the way it's um, it was about it's self criticism like Dan said and mm-hmm. and I I think you know self criticism it it could be a self defeating prophecy but it could also be a, a self delusion uh, self delusional policy. You know, where you're just like, I don't, why do I need to have a physical? You know, I'm a man. Men don't need physicals. You know what I mean? Just go through it. Or or I got to take care of my family. I can't really focus on me right now. And and we because we think it's, we, you know, we get critical on ourselves if we start seeking self-care or de- taking care of basic medical care. And mm-hmm. then after we get sick, we have regrets about not doing the things we could have done to help ourselves feel better. Just like what Dan said about uh, the booster. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I know that was an, I don't know if that was an awkward transition, but I just, I just, it just occurred to me that being, being self-critical can, it, it can, it can beat you down and it could, and, but it just, I just realized you could, it could make you think things that aren't true. Hey, I, I think mm-hmm. it was a great, it was a great segue because you were self-critical of yourself about how you brought it in. So, <laughs> yeah, I know. I know that that was a that was what we call a shoehorn, but uh. yeah. But I think I think honestly, it's it's one that affects all men out there. 
not just us, you know? Why the, the topic is self criticism. Oh my god, I had to I had to like slow it down and say that word because I can't speak English for nothing. You guys, that would mess <laughs> up everything. Self criticism, you know? So self criticism is re- the thing I about self like self clitorism. <laughs> self clitorism. You, you gotta be into self clitorism. I mean, you gotta focus, and it's in the middle. Self clitorism. <laughs> that's that's a new way for men to talk. <laughs> <laughs> but I think honestly, it's crazy how like we 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 we're, we're on this flow now when we where we're getting together of just like going with the flow and it, and and it's like almost like I do my stand up. I don't know exactly how I'm gonna start, but then we start and we get into this. And honestly, this falls under the the, the topic for today. I think is one of the most self criticism that every man out there do not take care of themselves. Why are we so stubborn when it comes to stuff like that? Why we gotta wait to the last minute? You know. Well, it is interesting because, like, during COVID, without almost, I would say without realizing, but I actually was kind of aware of it, I was, like, challenging myself to not take a day off. I was like, okay, maybe you could take a a lighter day, but come on, work, work through it. You can do this. It's just, you know, it's just a bad cold. And, you know, that really was starting to wear on me, and, and you realize how much pressure we put on ourselves and this is just one area that we can be critical of ourselves about and it happens in many many areas but it is interesting i was giving myself a hard time about it the whole time yeah interesting man very interesting i don't i mean self self criticism is is big in a lot of ways and more <laughs> ways than one if you think about all the way that we could criticize ourselves as men when it comes to um relationships you know relationships work you know, any anything that you do, you know, I, I criticize myself all the time in, in my line of work as a comic. You know, people think, yo, you have the best job in the world. What what, what, what do you, you know? And I'm like, no, man, every night before I hit that stage, I criticize myself. Are these people going to understand me? Are these people going to feel me? Am I going to connect with these people? You know, uh, I, for one, will tell you that I am my worst critic. I am my own worst critic. Nothing I don't you think that's a bad me. thing in certain ways, though. And, no, and, no. And, and and I and I wanna I wanna make you know, all criticism criticism is, is neither negative or positive. I I think a part of it is what we do with it and how we use it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if you use constructive criticism on yourself to try to improve yourself, uh, because you're like, okay, this is how you could improve this and get better. That's one thing. If if it's self criticism that you just say, well, I'm just too dumb to even do it at all then it's not it's going to be something that just drags you down and makes you and freezes you like um but, but that's at, the key oh, right that's the I'm key sorry. right there is whether it's constructive or not right you know like mm-hmm. what percentage of the time would you say that criticism ends up being constructive actually i mean if we could if we could lay out all the times that everyone's ever been critical of themselves inside their own heads and actually label well how much of the time was it constructive i will tell you my guess would be that it's less than 1% of the time Mm. That's, it, it, that's I, mean, I I I have a I have it balanced with when it comes to comedy. On the personal note, totally agree it's one percent. All right, but well, mm-hmm. uh, maybe that's maybe the, that's why comedy is partly your happy place is you you yeah. don't have to live in yeah. One, I I, you know, I think 1%. I, I I think that um, comedy allows me to um to, to go to a place where I, I have a skill where I can feel confident, which is always good. Uh, and when you do well at something, that's an opportunity that you know you're not going to have to self-criticize yourself. Now, if you don't have the best set, then, yeah, you're going to sit down and you're going to go, what could I have done? Did I miss a line? You know, uh, should I have ended earlier? Whatever the case may be. Uh, mm-hmm. But there's always at least some good came out of it. I got some laughs. When when you're doubting yourself on a personal level, on a, in your personal life, um, and the only feedback you have is yourself. When you're doing comedy, you're getting feedback. You're getting audience feedback. When you're criticizing yourself, the only voice you hear is the one in your head. And sometimes that voice be lying, at least to me, I think. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's interesting. So, sometimes as I think about these things, I, it's like I, I learn from my own thought process about it. And I was thinking about what you were saying there and realizing that the distinction you were making is so important because when you feel good about yourself, Overall, that's an area where you won't criticize yourself all the time. It's the areas where you don't feel fully good about yourself or even if there's like some doubt about it. You know, like, you know you're a good comedian. I know I'm a good therapist. I don't spend a lot of time criticizing what I do as a therapist. 
Um, I don't even spend that much time criticizing myself, let's say, like as a dad, but I do much more than I do as a therapist. So the more personal it gets and the less sure we are of ourselves about it, the more likely there is to be criticism that's not constructive. So my question to you is, Dr. Dan, so when we do criticize ourselves in that negative way, what should we do? You know, should like, cause now I'm thinking about the whole mind body. I'm thinking about it in the moment. I'm thinking about how to, how to change it around, you know, but what should you really do when you're in that moment? Like Eric said, cause in stand up, yeah, we have an audience. We get the feedback right away. If it was great, it was great. And if it doesn't, it, you're like, holy sh- it didn't work, you know? And, but in real life, as a man going through something or when you're alone in a room and you let in your mind, just boom, wonder and criticize what should, what should we do? I mean, how do you get help for that? Well, I think the first step is is to actually be able to take a step back and consider, am I criticizing myself or not? Because one of the things that happens is that critical voice in your head will just sound like the truth. It doesn't sound like mm-hmm. I'm criticizing myself and maybe it's not true. No, you're, you're thinking I, I suck and that's right. So you always want to take a step back and, and say, wait a minute. Am I, am I criticizing myself? Recognizing that it's happening is the first step. That's the very first thing you need to do. Then you can start to ask yourself, now wait, am I, am I actually being fair to myself? But you got to really ask the question. You know, A lot of times I'll tell people to do that sort of thing and they'll kind of go through the motions of it and they'll say, oh, am I being fair to myself? And then they'll go right back to criticizing themselves. Yep, I am. I screwed that up. Blah, 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 blah. You got to pause. You got to recognize that your 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 brain is almost just wired to criticize ourselves in in certain ways. I I, I even need to think about why that is. <laughs> Let me ask you guys, because it it seems to me that at least in in American society anyway, and many of the societies that I've seen, there's a lot of self criticism. Why do we think there is? <sighs> I mean, you I, take a stab at uh, go ahead. Uh, go, unless you no, want no, to... you go ahead. You go ahead, bro. You, you I mean, I, I, first. I think. Well, I, I think there's a lot of reasons for it. Um, I, I think, it, in my opinion, one one reasons I think it's gotten worse lately is that um, uh, people have a vision of what they think their lives should be because of social media. So if they and all they see are people living their best lives at all moments, having this perfect life with clothes and money and travel and all this other stuff. And, 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 right. and, and I think people just start dumping on themselves because they, they, they're not seeing, even though it's an illusion, it's all part of the lie. But I, right. I, think that's, I think that's part of the reason why people are being so self-critical about themselves because they feel like they're not accomplishing what others are accomplishing because now... Everything that's on society is like, oh, look at me, I'm successful. You know, before you didn't know how everybody was doing. You could kind of focus more on yourself. Now the whole world, you're just surrounded by images of how everybody's doing. I can't help but think that has to affect how you criticize yourself when you start looking at, you know, that's all you see in the world. I think that's a great point. And I I think even before social media, when I think about what kinds of things are put out there in entertainment, We've talked about this a long time ago. Early in season one, we talked about how we all love romantic comedies, which, you know, hilarious mm-hmm. for three men to get together and we love romantic comedies. We should watch one together sometime. We, sh- we yes. should. But, you know, when you do watch those romantic comedies, uh, so I just watched uh, Sleepless in Seattle with uh, with my girl. Tom Hanks, Meg Ryan. Great movie. And, uh, and there's a line in it where Rosie O'Donnell says, that's your problem. You want to be in love in a movie, not in real life. And I, I do think there's a way in which we exist that way, whether romantically or in other other forms where we just, we want to be, it's like we want to be in some movie where we're our best self and everything goes smoothly and our partner's, you know, perfect for us and all that stuff. And then you add in social media on top of it. And there's a tendency to just be self-critical from, I would say it's partly from child development because as little kids, we grow up, and we look at the world and these adults can do all kinds of things we can't do. And little kids mm-hmm. criticize themselves for it. They just do. They're like, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. You know, another thing about when, when you're self-critical, uh, people will react to you differently if, in their opinion, you have no reason to be self-critical. And they don't see the things that you see that you're being self-critical about. 
Uh, I mean, some people take the attitude when when someone says, oh, I'm really not feeling good about this or I'm, I really don't feel like I'm lo looking really good. So, sometimes people will react like you're just fishing for a compliment and take that as a, oh, they just want to feed their ego as opposed to maybe they could really use some reaffirming words at that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, like like uh, it cause, because it's funny, like if some if someone's good looking and they keep talking about how ugly they are, people will either react to, oh, my God, she must have some kind of dysmorphia of how he or she or they up here. Or they're going to be thinking, do, do, do you need to be gassed all the time? Do you need a compliment every 15 minutes? Uh, and that annoys people if, if people if they think that this is someone that just wants to be told how good looking they are or how smart they are. Uh, so I, I, I think, you know, depending on, you know, if people don't think if, if people have the opinion that you have nothing to be self-critical about, I don't think the seriousness of it uh, is taken by others or is perceived by others around you. Am I, does that make any, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Does that make any sense? Especially if you do it a lot. I've, I've known a lot of people like that. They're just like, they just want that attention, you know, like they just want you to tell them everything is going to be all right, you know? So, and then I guess you could determine who those people are. No, but I'm okay know? with someone that if they want to hear everything's going to be all right, because that to me is that, because that's, that's not wanting to hear I look good or I'm smart. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. like I, I think there's a difference between reaffirming yourself as a person and just trying to pinpoint how special you are compared to others in this one area, you mm -hmm. know, whether no, that... it be looks or intelligence. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I think there's a fine line, um, but I, it's, if people perceive you as someone that should have everything, should have life by the balls because they perceive you have this or they perceive you should be like this because of how you appear or how you come across, they may not take what you're going through as seriously as other mental health concerns, in my opinion. I think it's mm. a good place to start by assuming that people are not uh, fishing for compliments or just doing that for no reason. Usually people are hurting in some way. What I think could be helpful, though, on top of it is, uh, you know, when you are thinking about what's hard for you to try to zero in on what's really hard for you. So, like, some people can get caught up on... I don't think I look good. But really, if you start digging underneath what's what's really bothering you, it could be that they don't feel that they're like a good person or that they're smart or that they're worthwhile or valid. It's usually something deeper. So I I I, I love your point, Eric, because I think it's first of all, it's a kinder way to interact with people, but it also if we're really going to talk to each other and we're going on the assumption that, oh, you're fishing for compliments or you don't really need that or whatever, that's getting in the way of really communicating. I think we need to give each other the benefit of the doubt first. Like if somebody keeps doing it over and over and they clearly are just fishing for the compliment, you'll figure that out. It's pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. But actually, I find it, it almost, it rarely happens. Uh, so the older I get, the, the less it happens even. <laughs> yeah, well, um, and, and more in men. And more men, I think women, women talk about it. Well, women will let anything out or whatever's bothering. Boom, they'll they'll talk about it. But I think, like Eric said in the beginning, we hide. We 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 don't we don't talk about things like that. Like, we'd rather talk like, about, when about was sports. the last time you felt bad about your ass and said and called me and said and then you know, on Zoom and said, "Yo, Eric," and then bent over and said, "Look at my ass." Does, does this look like a nice ass? That's very direct. I mean, it, it's better no, than him being like, that, that was Eric, how I, I feel. You threw me off. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, no, well, well, that that was, you know, by the way, they did they did that in Sleepless in Seattle. He didn't show his naked ass, but in that movie, Tom Hanks did lift his jacket to show Rob Reiner his ass yeah, to see that, if he had a true. nice ass because he was going back into the dating pool. I will verify it. I just, just saw it. <laughs> that, that was, uh, you know, the movie. You know, the, I mean, by I the way, saw Tom Hanks' ass also. but uh, Completely on a movie. different subject, but we should, we're going to get back to uh, what we're talking about. But if we ever decide the, to, to do the a romantic comedy version of Mystery Science Theater 3000, I think we would kill it. All right, Ooh, so that's I just, like that. just uh, that's putting that out there. But, um, uh, but, you know, I think two things that go hand in hand self-criticism and just insecurity you know what i mean because <laughs> okay i'm sorry that made me laugh because <laughs> behind the scenes i'm just gonna share this with the viewers behind right, the well, scenes, we, eric has been singing a Bee Gees <laughs> version uh what is this, what's the original song all right the, the song is the, it's the original song is Bee Gees tragedy tragedy oh, right. yeah yeah, yeah. 
So I've been, <laughs> legally, I've been just using the word insecurity. <laughs> yeah. So now, now I'll never hear that word the same. So way. now, every time I say that word, um, both Edgar and <laughs> Doctor Dan are gonna be like, <laughs> I think it has a lot to do with uh, with um. Well, I think machismo. that's the foundation of of self criticism, right? Is mm -hmm. insecurities, right? You're just in, internal, external, whatever. That's if those are the birthplace of our self criticisms, right, mm -hmm. Doctor Dan? Well, it's interesting. I, I I don't think you're wrong about that, but I also think interestingly, it also works in reverse. Insecurities come from the fact that we're self critical in the first place, and I, to that point, I really think it's a cycle. I think we just get into a vicious cycle with ourselves about. Insecurity, self criticism, insecurity, self criticism. Oh, so it's like like a chicken and egg thing. Yeah. Um, I think that. Uh, but I think you're probably right at base that it comes from insecurity in the first place, because really, that's the basis of of life. Is we come out wanting to be loved and we're looking. You know, the, if you watch a baby, that they're they're just looking to be like, do you think I'm cute? That's seriously. I mean, speaking of fishing for compliments, babies are just like. Yeah, babies, you, you know, cute? babies piss me off. Always looking for a compliment. Always looking for a compliment. <laughs> looking for food and water and shelter. So, so immature. <sighs> Grow up, babies. <laughs> Grow up. <laughs> but in all seriousness, <laughs> they, up, they are looking to see, am I loved? Am I valued? And that feeling never goes away. That, that's what we carry through our whole lives. And we can, we can, you know, act like it doesn't matter to us anymore. But that's just but, an act, and it's deep down inside, right? Yeah. And I think I think with as, as the years go by, as men, it just it just builds up more and more and more. You know what I was just thinking when you was talking, Eric? I, the other day I texted with a, a friend of mine's and a, a good friend. You know, he, he we were texting about something deep, and and I and I meant not to, a shallow uh, friend like me. No, 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 dude, dude, come on, yeah, relax. And he winked, and he he freaking winked. Did you see that? <laughs> but no, but check this out. Look look how self-criticism comes, right? I consider this a good friend, yet I hesitated during the end of the text to write, love you, bro. Some, so, You yep. know, something that we, we could say to us, you know, like uh, from between us, we're like, yo, I love you. I love you, Dr. Dan. I love you, Eric. And, and, and why is it so hard for men to say I love you to one another, you know why? Why is it for men we could only love women and and our you know in our family? Why is it so hard to show it? And I hesitated, dude. I hesitated for a second. I'm and, and and I guess the the whole insecurity was like I don't know how he was gonna take it, you know. But I wanted to let him know that I do appreciate our friendship, dude, and I, and I do love you, man. I'm there for you, and and yeah. and, and, and I didn't send it. <laughs> I didn't send it. Yeah, <laughs> you but know. It, but and and it was like so weird. But that was in a you know an insecurity right there that it held me back. It held me back from something that I wanted to do because I was worried about how the other person was gonna take it, and and we we shouldn't feel that way. We shouldn't, right? Well, I yeah I, I follow you, and I think ideally not. But the the thing that ends up happening is think about it when when you say that. I mean, we we live in a culture where it's not always rewarded. There's going to be times where people will say like, dude, that's weird or, so, you know, like that's the kind of thing we grew up with anyway. And we do have to fight through that. I, I think modeling it is good to go ahead and put it out there so that other people can feel like, OK, so it's safe to actually say. But if you think about it, if you if you put yourself out there and say, you, you, you know, you love somebody and then they don't respond well, that's just like that baby experience all over again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. It really Damn is. babies. Grow up, babies. <laughs> Well, maybe yep. Edgar, maybe you really didn't love that person. Maybe that was maybe it wasn't even that deep. Maybe you were just like you just trying to. Get, Eric is no, like you text me. I you know, love maybe you. Maybe he was just trying to get into their emotional pants. You know what I mean? No, Not literal man. pants. You were you were just trying to get into their emotional pants, friendship no, pants. That's, and, that's hilarious. You know, no, but but I feel pants. like that's I feel like, like as men, this is something that we struggle with. You know what I'm saying? And and you know, it's not for you to be throwing it out there like what every day whatever the case no, may be is. but once in a while we should fucking we should take you know acknowledge each other and be like yo bro you know i appreciate your friendship i appreciate you in my life thank you for being there i love you as a brother thank whatever you, you know what i'm saying and and we we hold ourselves back from that which is goes back to the previous yeah. episode on how we deny ourselves those that connection and it happens more with men Women, mm -hmm. women would love each other every day. They meet each other. They could just a woman would meet each other one night, and then I love her. I love her so much, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Guys is like, you know, 
And I think yeah. it has a, that, a lot to do with uh, the machismo, the the way we are brought up, how we are taught not to show our emotions, how how crying is a sign of weakness, how and all this shit that we we taught growing up. And and now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm at that point that I don't want to be like that no more. I wanna I wanna show I wanna show my emotions. I wanna show you how how special you are if you're special in my life. I wanna you know I don't wanna hide you know, who I really am. And and I'm still dealing with it. I'm still dealing. I'm not perfect. I'm not saying that I'm up here like, oh, you know, I'm great. I know myself completely. I don't. I still battle. And that was a battle. Like, I just thought about it. I just thought about it right now. As everyone was talking, I was like, how I hesitated to tell a good friend of mine, I love I love you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it, it was like, why? Why do we do this as men? Why, do we, why are we like this as men, you know? Not only that, but if you notice, like when, when men will tell each other they love each other, it's usually either they leave off the I, they just say love you, <laughs> yeah. or they say I love you, bro, or, or you know the movie I love oh, you. Oh, oh, they'll leave the E out. L U V, love. I love. <laughs> right. I love her. And I love they'll you. They'll put a little heart over the top. <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, it's really it's really interesting how we alter it. We're like, oh, I'll just I'll leave the I out. So then I didn't really say it. it it's mm-hmm. like we're afraid to commit to admitting what we really feel and to me that does go back to self-criticism it, it goes back to this this experience of i'm not good enough and if i say that i if i say i love you to somebody and they don't say it back uh or they don't respond as if they do that's gonna hurt me bad and then i'm gonna have to hide myself even more then i'll get even more self-critical and then i gotta hide myself even more mm-hmm. and that's the cycle we get into and that is why men don't talk generally speaking, if, if we're making generalizations about it. Yeah, oh, interesting. Well, I came up with a solution that works for me. You know, when I'm at the point of, I don't know if I want to <clears throat> tell a friend that I love them, I write it on a note. I write, I love you. Do you love me? And with <laughs> a box for yes. <laughs> and then a box for no. And then I fold it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And I give it to him, and then I walk away. Yeah, and then <laughs> if they I put if a they... little paper plane and I throw it to him. No, no, not, not even not even a paper plane because that's not far. I I give it to him and I mm-hmm. run and I get to the parking lot and I drive away. <laughs> right, and, and then if if it's bad news, then you can just be like, I if my phone doesn't ring within five minutes, then I know I made the right decision. <laughs> it's uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm that's I'm the complete opposite in that I'm yeah I I I've been one of those. I love you, dude. I love you, man. I've been I've been that guy since I was since I can remember. I've never been one of those afraid to tell a a, a dude that they uh, that they loved him. That, but that was my my dad was like that. So my you know my dad would tell me I, he loved me every five minutes, maybe because he only had me for half an hour. But that's not a point. It's not the point. The point is, <laughs> he you know he 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 kept saying it and uh, and trying to you know. You know when you, when when like you you get, try to get kissed by your dad. You know some 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 dads don't kiss their sons, or well, they have mixed feelings about kissing their sons as opposed to kissing their daughters. And I I gotta tell you, I think I think the the one of the best things my dad ever did for me raising me was being comfortable kissing me as a man. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Showing that kind of expressive physical love that you know, uh, may not be considered masculine, but it was coming from my masculine template. Mm-hmm. So, no, you know, knowing that he was cool with just, and I was cool getting it. And when I got older and, and, uh, and he, he, he wanted to stop and he thought I didn't want to, I didn't want his, a kiss on the cheek no more. And I, and I was like, well, where's my kiss? So, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he thought I was getting too old as a teenager. And I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, man, I, I, I pop, you know what I mean? I, that, that was, that was part of our greeting. So I, I think that that's part of what made me the person I am now is like, if I have genuine feelings and, and they come out and I, I express them. And I've been lucky that um, I haven't had an experience where I've regretted it or, or had it come back to, to bite me. But I also think with age, you kind of care less about reaction and you just kind of focus on what matters to you. Well, it also sounds like you, you kind of just knew who you were in that regard. And that's similar to like how you are as a, um, as a comedian. You, you know who you are, so you're not as worried about it. And I think I, I would say that what you did there is really important, not just for you, but for the people around you. We all, we all have a chance to 
model for people how you can be. You know, so if you feel like you want to say I love you to a guy, you should for multiple. I mean, as long as you actually do for yeah, multiple saying, reasons. Not to not to a stranger. Don't just, yeah, don't just excuse say me, sir. Anybody. I love you. Excuse me, I love you. <laughs> Random people down the street. Just keep walking. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. In who the you elevator. Are, but Press but, number two. I love you. <laughs> but we're 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 what we're doing, which is similar to what we do in this show and why we do this show. Mm-hmm. It, you know, we talk about the the segment that we sometimes do, walking the walk. But really, we are walking the walk. We're, we're going ahead and living the way that we wish other people would. And every time we do this, it gives people permission. So, like, one of my very very best friends. Uh, Lauren, he, he lives in uh, New York and, um, you know, we talk very openly about these things, but one of our, one of the special things in our relationship, I think, and I, I'm really grateful to him for this. He, he freely admits that my openness led to a change in him. Like I mm. just, I just forged forward and kept like, I wasn't going to be all sarcastic and different uh, uh distant and all that stuff instead i was open i was sincere and he wanted to be that and he and he actually naturally is that way but he had to be so guarded in the world and and then what he doesn't what he didn't know he knows this now because i've told him is that uh i felt the same way actually he did the same thing for me he just he wasn't seeing it that way it's so easy mm-hmm. for us to see what the other person does but not what we do for each other so when you go ahead and live that way, you're you're potentially opening doors for people. So if you want to yeah. do that and you feel it's a good addition to life, do it. And it's and yeah, I agree with you 100. percent And I think it has a lot to do with with, with our fathers as well, Eric. Because I'm the same way. You know, to this day, I see my father and I'll give him a kiss. You know, oh, yeah. and yeah. I remember, I remember maybe as a kid when I was in in junior high school or something, he picked me up. I was like, oh, I was a little skeptical because. I don't know if it's a a Latino thing, but I never saw any of my friends kiss their dads. You know what I'm saying? But I, to me, out of respect, you know, that was always the case. To this day, I see my father, no hesitation on kiss, on giving him a kiss. I've had friends like 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 Angelo, Eric, man, he rest in peace. Angelo was that dude. I mean, he see you in a meal, come up to you, give you a kiss, and and, and as, a, as a man, you're like, oh, but but you like, dude, that there's nothing, there's nothing there. So I feel. The, the way we, we change is to to address it and then, like you said, pay it forward the same way, the same way. That, you know what? Maybe at first they won't take it. Maybe at first they won't be, they'll see it kind of weird, but then they'll go home and think about it and be like, dude, dude Eric is a good dude. I really, I, I think I love this dude too. It has nothing to do with, you know, loving each other like a like a relationship, but, you know, it's about showing each other our, our true manhood. And eventually, if if and, and I've said it, and I, and that's the reason why we meet and we do this podcast because I feel like if the listeners, the viewers are looking at us right now, hopefully they'll go back and be like, let, let me open up to someone, let me see how they take it. And like Eric said, not everybody's gonna take it, not everybody's gonna take it, not you may never get the feedback you want, but you planted that seed on that other person, you know. And eventually, if you keep doing it, eventually that other person will be like, yo, this, this is nice. I, I, I appreciate this friendship as opposed to a, a, a fake friendship, you know. Like, uh, you know, same thing out here being in Hollywood and all these industry and everybody and, and you know, it's, it's all fake. It's all really fake, you know. So I feel like to be better when these insecurities come in, address them right away. I've learned like whatever, whatever it is, whatever insecurity comes in, whatever, you know, self criticism comes in, I, I try to correct it on my own. That's what I do. Like, oh, wh- wh- uh, why, why, whatever it is, well, I, I don't know if I could do this. No, I could, I could do this. You know, the, why, why am I telling me no? If I tell myself no, I'm already, I'm already conditioning to no. I know now. I'm like, okay, it's no. So I try to fix it right away, and 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 talk to about it as much as we can. You know, yeah. and this is why I love what we're doing here. Uh, I couldn't agree more, but I was thinking about, you asked the question a while back in the show, what do we do when we're getting mm-hmm. self-critical? And I answered part of it. But mm-hmm. now as you were talking, I was thinking that there's another thing that I could add to it. And it really is this. When you're being self-critical, one thing you, you can recognize is we all have the opportunity. Th- this is one of those moments actually where I'm going to say something that could get dismissed as cheesy. You know, like, oh, here we go. And... 
that would make me shut down and usually not do it. Or I might say it as a joke so that I get it in there, but I'm going to say it straightforward. When you are criticizing yourself, you got to remember, you actually have a chance to be a friend to yourself. Like actually think about how you're interacting with yourself. Would you ever treat a friend like you treat yourself? Probably not. We treat ourselves the worst. Mm -hmm. Would you ever that do that true. to a friend? Yeah, that is true. Interesting. Good point. That's true because I, I, I've lent friends money. I wouldn't give myself a fucking dime. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's, that's why you're so poor. I'm kidding. I'm, well, I mean, you know, I, I, uh, another thing I want to jump on that both, uh, both of you guys said, um, the benefits of just talking to learn from others um, you know those how they they have these cultural exchange programs where like they'll have someone fly to a foreign country and spend like three or four months so that they can learn their culture and their language and how they do things and come back with a different perspective. You when I think when you I think when when you, when you talk to somebody on on an emotional level and to get to getting to know each other, it's like a an emotional cultural exchange program where you're you, that you're learning from each other. Like you know you might be able to learn something from somebody like wow that's very insightful. I can apply that to my everyday life or you might say something that 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 it hits somebody in the head and they're like, wow, I could really change myself view of myself if I look at it the way this other person does. Well, so um, mm -hmm. I think sometimes that's why we need to and, and especially men, because we don't have these type of conversations with each other. We mm -hmm. may have them with our partners, but uh, with, our, with our the ones we're in love with, but not just our friends. And I think these conversations could be real confidence builders and help us not be so self-critical. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's a great point. I, I, I was thinking about something totally different, and there's a reason why. It's funny. I actually disappeared into self-criticism there, uh, um, and you guys probably wouldn't have even known. So uh, I want to I want to share this because I think it's an important kind of moment. So, um, like, so Eric, you just made a joke about how like you wouldn't even give yourself money, and then I made I I was like, oh, that's why you're so poor, and I was just saying it as a joke. But then I was like, oh shit. What if, what if Eric like got offended by that? What if he was upset by that? And then I was like, you know, then you get in your own head. I'm and I'm just I'm just saying this is the kind of thing that happens. Mm -hmm. now, Eric, if I did offend you about that, I apologize. But oh please, please, I, I, I figured know I'm not. Broke. But look, but look, <laughs> <laughs> but but the joke was simply about the fact that if you won't give yourself money, you won't get any. That that's all I meant by the joke. But then I went to a place where I was like, crap. You know, and, and I wanted to share that because, and to me, this is another type of sharing where we go ahead and share in the moment because otherwise, I'll tell you what would, ha would have happened to me. I would have gone through this thing where I would have said, come on, Eric's not like that. He's not going to care at all. He probably didn't even notice. Mm -hmm. But then there'd be some other part of me that would be like, but what if he did? You know, it's and, interesting. and then I'm off and running and that could... I'm not saying it would have been the case because I've learned how to, I had already started to just let it go. Like to just be like, this is not a big deal. I can let it go. I decided though to use it as an example because it was the only time during this experience that I did actually get quite self-critical of myself. And I was like, well, shouldn't I share it? <laughs> yeah. But, but that, but that kind of highlights, I mean, that's, I find that interesting. Uh, first of all, I hate you for what you said. Uh, second, I'm relieved. Uh, um, it, but but it just it it just goes to show you how difficult that how difficult it could be for people to trust in the words that they're saying to someone that they've had conversations with for quite amount of uh, amount of time and very deep, uh, you know, conversations about mental health and about being being open to talk. And even still, that thought still crept in your head after right. all the time we've been speaking. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if it still presents challenges to us after all this time, then that just shows you how hard it is to start these things from the beginning and how long it can take to cultivate and really grow, but become something really great. Not only mm -hmm. that, but we, we've not only spent time together, we've spent some serious quality time. Like when yeah. we talk, there are not many people that I actually trust on the earth as much as I trust you guys. I actually mean that. And nice. it's because of the way we talk to each other, mm -hmm. and that's why I shared it. Because I, yeah, I mean, and, and and yeah, I don't, I didn't see nothing wrong with it, and, but I could see where you, where you're coming from, you know, and and I think, 
I think men do it more. I think when we when we sharing something, we're, we're bound to like, what the, what's wrong with you, man? Because that's how we know how to show our emotions with, with, with a joke or or a snap or whatever the case may be. I mean, I, honestly, I didn't see nothing wrong with it either. I heard it, but I was like, nah, we joke around. We know each other. And that's what I think we got to learn how to do is determine those moments. And if you know a friend good enough, if you're good, when you, if you know that, Eric's not going to take offense to that, then you could dismiss that right away. But I but do know, agree with you on, on addressing it right there at the moment because that could go back and then you, you'll go into your own head and then you'll be thinking about it and it'll drive you crazy and it's just added stress to you that you don't need over something that Eric didn't even react to, you right. know? Well, and, and there also was something that I did inside my own head that is the kind of thing that can help, which is I reminded myself of what my actual intentions were. I was like, oh, I was just trying to say something funny and clever about, you know, giving money to yourself. Mm -hmm. So if I remember what my actual intentions were, that's a good example of what we can do with self-criticism, where we go back in and say, no, 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 no. You're you're criticizing yourself as if you meant to. Like, I, I, first of all, I did not uh, succeed in offending Eric. Not that I meant to. But no. I, I'm nice glad try. I did. Do better it takes a lot. It's a, it's a lot. It takes way didn't. more than that. Way more than that, Dr. Man. But, Talk but about even, babies more. <laughs> it'll just infuriate me or grown men in incubators <laughs> oh, men in inc <laughs> <laughs> but you know what i what i was able to do so i i knew i had two options i could i could bring it out in the open and i knew that we would laugh about it and it wouldn't be a big deal because of how i trust you guys and know you guys or i could remind myself i didn't have any bad intentions like so you know, if I did upset anybody and they came to me about it, I could genuinely apologize. But I know I really didn't mean anything. You know, I just mm -hmm. was having fun. So there's options to detach from self-criticism within ourselves. And we can also bring it to each other. Mm -hmm. And I think we mm -hmm. should also ask ourselves, but, you know, at least I'm I'm going to try to do it because um, you you're not going to avoid criticism or self-criticism completely. So, but, you know, maybe instead of just trying to stop it, maybe ask yourself why you're doing it and what can you do honestly that can change that view of yourself, whether it's internal or external, you know, just kind of instead of just letting it beat you down, try to harness it and use it as a as a pole vault rather than something just that's beating you down. But mm -hmm. um, it takes away from everything that you're doing and and. Life, you know, and you know, you're, you're living life, but in the back of the head, that question is bothering you, and you're not enjoying the moment, you know. So, great point, Dr. Dan, on addressing it right there and then, you know. Like, I think we 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 laugh things off and go ha 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 and walk away, but you know, we should definitely um talk more on it. And I really enjoyed this episode, I really did. It was like if we didn't know where we were going with it, we decided to just go off the wing. And I think we could just keep talking another hour if everything didn't have to go, we could go another hour on it. But uh, I, I did we'll talk learn about a lot. this again for sure. If I can bring up the confidence to bring it up, <laughs> 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 all right, we got to get Eric out of here. I, I've already, Wait. I've already um, raised a phantom insult that led to no problems whatsoever, no, and no. now. Now we have to make sure that he's not late to his his uh his gig. That's right. That's it. Man. Gotta run, people. So um, thank you, man. Thank you to everyone who listened. Uh, thank you for the viewers. Please comment down below if you got a comment, a question. Well, we haven't gotten no questions, so please question. Send Doctor Dan a question if you want to deal with anything, and 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 let's keep talking, brothers. Let's keep being nicer to one another. Let's let's open up, you know, in in a good way. And if they don't get it, you know, keep trying. Eventually, we'll all get it, and we'll be better. As men, so Sounds Dr. Good. Dan, if you want, just take us out so Eric can get out of here. He's looking patient. He looks impatient. All Let's right, go. here we go. <laughs> if you haven't already, click subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, hit like if you like what you're hearing, and put your comments below, and we'll get back to you personally. Yes, sir. Brothers in arms. arms. Machismo. Insecurity. Insecurity. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs>